Hey there YouTube, this is Vargas XX78 with another collection pickup video. Uh went for my comic run, my long awaited comic run. Uh had a lot of books uh on store for me. So uh finally had a chance to go pick them up and have time to make a video, so let's get started. First off, picked up Action Comics issues 904, the last Action Comics before the reboot. Concluding the Reign of the Doomsday storyline. Uh, Superman and Team Superman uh, stop the Doomsdays. Uh, Superman is able to access the uh, interdimensional ship's computer. Uh, which then uh, in turn helps him stop uh, Doomslayer. And the Eradicator sacrifices his life to uh, save Superman and destroy uh, Doomslayer. So really good issue. The artwork I thought was really good. Uh, really, really, really sad to see the numbering go, but, you know, the ADC, I guess. Picked up The Amazing Spider-Man issue 667, part one of the whole Spider Island thing. Liked the cover a lot, with all the heroes wearing, uh, you know, Spider-Man costumes. And I have issue 668. Of Amazing Spider-Man, with Spider-Man tackling the Jackal there. I'm not sure how I feel about you know Marvel bringing back the Jackal, um, but you know, so far it's it's an interesting storyline. Picked up Venom issue six, loving Venom. Venom I think is a really really good series. Um, so yeah, def definitely definitely give this this issue this series a shot because it's really really good. Picked up Astonishing X-Men issue 41, uh, jumping back to the team that's fighting against the monsters in Monster Island uh, under the control of Mentallo. Uh, Astonishing X-Men I liked, but I don't like what they're doing, that they're jumping between, uh, I think I mentioned this before, they're jumping between the Brood storyline and the Monster Island storyline, and it's, it's kind of distracting. I, I don't much care for that idea. They should have done one and then the other, but... You know, it is what it is. Picked up Fear Itself, book five. Uh, Thor is fighting against the possessed thing and Hulk, and he beats the heck. <laughs> Thor beats the heck out of both of them, and it's revealed that Franklin Richards has the power to actually reverse, uh, you know, the effects of the uh, of the possession. So, yeah. Really, really, really liking the Fear Itself, too. Uh, picked up Fear Itself, The Homefront. Uh, this anthology series that focuses on different storylines within Fear Itself. Uh, main draw for me is the artwork. The artwork is really, really good. And some of the stories are, are really, really good, too. So, Also, nice surprise there. Picked up the last issue of Batman. Batman issue 713 before the reboot. Focusing on the Batman... Damien, Dick Grayson, uh, Tim Drake, and Batman. Really like this. Uh, again, as with the other DC comic series, I'm really sad to see this timeline end and you know re be rebooted, but you know, can't be helped. Picked up Batman and Robin issue 26. Another series I'm really sad to see go because I really like the interaction between uh, Dick Grayson and Damien. I thought that interaction was so cool, and I kind of warmed up to the idea that Dick Grayson was, was going to be Batman for a while, but, you know, really, really liked the cover on this one. Picked up the last issue of Batman Incorporated before the reboot, issue 8. Uh, Bruce Wayne takes a trip down uh, Internet version 3 to solve a crime. Another weird issue by Grant Morrison. Uh, he's going to start writing action comics, and I hope his action comics is like his all-star Superman. That was awesome, but I'm not a big fan of Grant Morrison right now. Picked up uh, Batman Arkham City issue 5, concluding the five-issue miniseries, setting up uh, the new video game, Batman Arkham City. Uh, really, really cool series. The artwork was awesome. The writing by Paul Dini was great. Uh, and it just got me excited for, for the new video game, so real, really cool. 
picked up another one of the retroactive, the last of the Batman retroactives, uh, featuring a story from the 90s. This is an original story and then a reprint of a story and focuses on the ventriloquist, which I always thought was a weird uh, kind of villain, but still good. Picked up FF issue 8, featuring all the villains on the cover. Uh, the Future Foundation and all the villains are travel to the evolution machine, I think it's called, to try to stop the reeds. At the same time, the Inhumans uh, and the Universal Inhumans are also uh, taking a shot at the reeds, so it's pure chaos. And by the end of the issue, uh, you know, some villains betray the, the Future Foundation, so getting interesting. Really, really liking FF. Picked up the last issue of Pla uh, Flashpoint, issue 5 of 5. Uh, it's revealed that actually uh, Barry Allen is the one that uh, that caused the whole different timeline. Uh, he went back in time to stop Zoom from from killing his mom, which then led to the to the whole Flashpoint universe. Uh, because of that, Zoom is now a paradox. He's outside of time, so he doesn't have to worry about killing Barry Allen. Uh, Thomas Wayne actually ends up killing um, Reverse Flash. Barry Allen sees what he does, so he travels back in time to stop himself from changing time, which is kind of brain confusing <laughs> if you think about it too much. But he goes back in time, stops himself from changing the timeline, and then uh, a few issues before the end, this lady says that uh, there's three timelines that have to become one, and then that leads to the new timeline so much like Final Crisis this left more questions than answers uh, but no, I'm sorry not Final Crisis <laughs> Black is Night uh, Black is Night is what I, what I was trying to think of and uh, but yeah you know this this is the thing that starts a new timeline or the new universe so yeah it wasn't that that good of a, an event picked up Project Superman number three uh, Kal El is fighting against this government super guy that was created. Uh, he ends up stopping him, but is thrown back into the brig before uh, you know the Flash found him. So, eh, sort of good conclusion. Picked up Wonder Woman and the Furies, which focused on the war between o Emperor Aquaman and Queen Diana. Another so-so conclusion, not really that good, but eh. Speaking of really not good endings, picked up uh, Brightest Day Aftermath, The Search for Swamp Thing, uh, which really didn't resolve anything. Uh, Constantine was trying to kill Alec Boland so he can refuse with the with the green, but uh, Alec, Boland, Alec Boland's like, I want nothing of that, I want to start living my life, so, uh, you know, the green still ha doesn't have a human psychic to latch on to, so, I don't know how that's going <laughs> to work out, but... It's pretty much pointless because uh, the reboot's gonna go a different way. So, yeah, three issue, three issues of nothing, basically. Picked up War of the Green Lanterns Aftermath issue two. Uh, those Green Lanterns that were trying to take down uh, and execute Sinestro have a clash with the Guardians, and the Guardians see that you know uh, everything's falling apart. So. They try to start fixing things. Uh, they let Ganthet back into the court, but by the end of the issue, the Guardians have this weird zombie glow to them in their eyes, and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't bode well for Ganthet. So, but Sinestro is is still stuck as a Green Lantern. He he can't get to ring off. So uh, the new Green Lantern series with the reboot is going to focus on Sinestro. So I'll pick up the first issue because I, I'm actually curious to see how they go about that. Picked up uh, Superman Retroactive in the 80s, uh, which has a really cool story of Superman seeing all the tragedies that, that are happening. But uh, and it's a uh, it's a new tale plus a reprint of a story in the 80s. So good good idea that DC actually bothered to remember <laughs> some of their history before throwing it down the tube. But I, I actually enjoyed these retroactive things. Uh, picked up uh, Superman Retroactive in the 90s, uh, 
focusing on Lex Luthor. It's actually Lex Luthor there, dressed up as Superman. Another, actually, a really good issue. Picked up uh, Superman Batman issue 87. Uh, last issue was the revealed the Joker was the one that killed the reporter that found out that Batman was uh, Bruce Wayne. Uh, so the Joker knows that Clark Kent is onto the same story, so he tries to kill him. And it's interesting to see how Superman is trying to, you know, keep his secret from the Joker, while at the same time Batman's trying to to save him. That's I, I thought that was interesting. I, I like this issue, and again, it's the last issue of Superman Batman. Uh, the last issue of Justice League of America, Justice League 60. Uh, this team of, goes through a few adventures and they, they then decide that the uh, Justice League is done for. So, uh, Jesse Quick gets pregnant, which won't mean anything with the reboot. Uh, Mikkel goes into space. You know, a whole bunch of stuff that is now insignificant. But, yeah. And we start with the first issue of the new relaunch, Justice League number one. Um, don't know where this issue fits into. Uh, by the end of Flashpoint, the Flash and Batman seem to know each other, in, uh, you know, in first name basis. So it looks like they're still friends. But this issue is like the forming of the Justice League because, uh, you know, superheroes aren't that well known yet. Uh, Batman is still an, an urban legend, so uh, Green, he meets up with Green Lantern and... And uh, Dark, Dark Avenger actually mentioned this, that Jeff Johns writes uh, Green Lantern, and he obviously really, really likes the character. So it does seem weird that uh, Batman is able to take off the ring because Hal Jordan wasn't concentrating enough. Uh, Dark Avenger made a really, really good point of this, and uh, I suggest you watch his review of uh, Justice League, because, yeah, that makes no sense. Why would Jeff Johns do that? But... Uh, the writing's kind of weird. The artwork is the only thing that's worth picking up this book for. The artwork by Jim Lee is really, really good. Uh, I, I'm really, really blown away by Jim Lee in this in this book. So, yeah, good, interesting start to to the new universe. Then picked up Justice League Retroactive in the seventies. Justice League Retroactive in the eighties. Featuring the Detroit Justice League. And lastly, Justice League Retroactive in the 90s. Uh, this issue is really cool. It's uh, written by the team that did uh, that classic run in Justice League. Keith Giffen, J.M. J. DeMatthews, and Kevin McGuire. Real, this one this one is really good. If, if you pick up Just the League Retroactive, uh, make sure to pick up this one because this one is, is the one I would suggest you read. Really, really good. Okay, I uh, still have some more books to talk about, so I'll cut this video and stay tuned for, for, for part two. And until I see you again, guys, I'll see you later.